Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Okay. Right. Yeah, record this like tech problem right here. Look at this Joe Biden face. <laughs> I did. I see it. Dude, it's been one of these days, bro. Like, my daughter went, goes to this camp, and all of a sudden, like, we moved the camp to Santa Clarita. So then I, I had to get her to Santa Clarita from where I am because – so now that was an hour and a half. And then we get there, like, oh, did you get the email? I'm like, no. They're like, oh, it's 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 a swimming day. So, of course, I don't give her – I didn't open the email. So now I got to go to Ross, which – they hired like everyone with Down syndrome there, which is nice that they did that. But it's not necessarily. Well, you're being serious. You're not being sarcastic. Okay. No, no. They hired like five people that had Down syndrome, and 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 now I'm like trying to figure out where to get the bathing suits, and, and and I'm trying to be as nice as possible, but I have to get back here. I'm supposed to do another show, and uh, but they, they were very helpful. Uh, but but then. I got to deal no with the average process. American. I got to figure out how to buy a swimsuit for my little darling girl. Meanwhile, they had living on an air mattress in a goddamn <laughs> channel. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Joe all right. First of all, then they didn't have floaties. Second of all, Mayhem is living on an air mattress because oh, he had a mansion. He had oh, a mansion and, and like six cars. Okay. But instead decides to go on uh Rampage a time. Crazy bed left trip. A, a fucking eight-year bender to fight the cops every time I see him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. That's the accurate portrayal of my lifestyle. You know, I got really into that BLM. I really take it back now. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have defunded the police. I actually, I think I'm responsible for refunding the entire police department <laughs> of Orange County, California. So I'm glad that they got that budget bump that Good. they were asking I about. Don, I bring Mayhem in to make a speech to my wrestling team, right? To get to g give them like, hey, he comes oh, in, he drives, he drives two, <laughs> has two hours, tells them all, you can be whatever you want to be, try your hardest. A day later, he's on KTLA with a SWAT team. Okay, like literally, the guy that I brought is on a has a SWAT team on on the news, and I'm like, this is the guy <laughs> that I brought to give them to give them their. Shut interest. up, bro. All right, your your pension for exaggeration. That's what he wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, that's what he wanted to be. No, I mean, yeah, I was thinking about it. Actually, you got you got your kind of right. Uh, I I was like, thinking about my life, you know. And after like uh, I had my fight career, there was some point where I actively decided to be a criminal. I like said, you know what? Fuck it. I they want you know the internet says I'm a criminal. You know what? I'm a criminal now. And then. I was a, a, a successful criminal, uh, unfortunately. I'm very ashamed of it now. But think about it, right? I didn't go to prison forever, right? Uh, I didn't get shot to death, right? I was a success. Like, I made it through, and now I'm on to the next. Now I'm a comedian. So no, first of all, Jason, road. I tell you, I tell you all the time. What did we say? We, me and Jason went to the WNBA. Uh, I took him to say, a it's not gay. It's not gay if you look away. No, I, I tell you, I tell you, Jason, I say, Jason, you're doing great. Keep it up. I, I, I say you're doing fantastic. OK, I, I'm always the one in your ear telling you how good you're doing. Well, yeah, only because I got this fucking AirPod and you're constantly on the fucking phone. Yeah, yeah, you're always in my ear. So, uh, all right. So, so, hey, so yeah, you let's talk about that. You're just like, you're just like, no, no, you're, you're just like Joe Biden. You encourage him. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, exactly, bro. Never dropped out, Joe. Never dropped out. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have four more years of Trump, baby. Hey, so listen here. Well, we went to the Lesbian Olympics on uh, Sunday. Um, and I'm not talking about on the court, right? It, it was, was a sticky situation. Yes, it was the who's who <laughs> of clam baiters, bud. 
It was a next level. I, I got to see up close and personal uh, the man, the physique and just the unnaturally big hands of what's her name? Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner. <laughs> oh my God, bro. There's a reason that she's the champion of women's basketball. And, so, and it's mostly have to do with she is enormous. So, Bill, yeah, what? That was, what I had tickets, say? right? I had tickets and I was going to take my, my, my wife and kid, but they got sick. So I took Jason and my friend Josh, right? So we go to the WNBA. Of course, like, of course. Why wouldn't you? Why, 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 why not move from your daughter and your wife to Jason? It's a natural <laughs> fucking slide. So it was like eleven dollars. I, I, I even sat in the car seat on the way over there. <laughs> so it was like eleven dollars for floor seats, right? Like that's it was. So we're no like, way. Uh, yeah, we're at, like it's. <laughs> So eleven, and so the and no, no, like, I, no, I kicked in an extra four. It was fifteen. I sat on the floor like Jack Nicholson. So we go there, and <laughs> and Jason's actually. I'm a little nervous because I haven't seen Jason actually since he's been out. I've only seen. Oh him, yeah. I've only seen him on Zoom, right? So we go. We're, on we're TV, a, yes. We, so we're in a great. Yeah, I've always seen him on KTLA and then Zoom. So <laughs> so he's in a. We're in a. He's in a great mood, and he even said he goes, Adam. I find negativity in almost anything. I hate almost everything. And this is actually fun. Like, thank you, right? So it's great. But uh, the, problem, the problem is, though, is when Mayhem starts having fun, like, there's, they, uh, it, I start to get nervous because there's like too much fun. You know, there's like fun yeah. and there's like, I'm going to jump off a bridge, you know, like, yeah. kind of fun. So he was, you were dude, there for that? No. He, he was awesome. Did they the charge a court to steal the ball? <laughs> so we go there no, and oh, I go no, but I was talking smack bro I was talking shit directly to Brittany Griner like she like I was danger close enough where she could hear me so I was like you know and it's not an NBA game it's like kind of like a basketball game in the library it's like very quiet it's like Japan over there but anyway <laughs> he doesn't realize how loud he is what happened yeah, Don, he doesn't realize how loud he is, Jason. Because all of a sudden we get there and he has he has no inner monologue. Like, so we get there and he's like, he goes, Man, look at all these lesbians, right? So like I was like, <laughs> so I, I go, Jason, man, the, the people could hear you. He goes, Oh man, my bad. I didn't mean to say there were so many lesbians. And I'm just like, oh, okay, right? So then Oh, oh no. So at least, then, he at least he didn't say bull dykes. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then, so then, like fucking six year olds, we sneak to the floor seats, right? Because, like, yeah. well, so right when the guy, the guard's not looking, we actually get up and and like move down like little kids, like so. So now we're like on the very very front, right? And 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 I can tell the security guard doesn't know if he if we if he should kick us out or if he recognizes mayhem from Bully Beatdown, <laughs> like. Yeah, he no, he did. No, he did. He, he like, did like a, like a nod, like that, like, oh, fuck, it's Mayhem. Like, so, son of a bitch. So then Mayhem fuck, goes, fuck. hey, so then Brittany Griner is about, like, five feet taller than everybody. I mean, she's, yeah. she's, it's almost like she's playing with little children, you know? So she goes, yeah. Mayhem gets up and goes, hey, Griner. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. And he goes, Griner, why don't you let someone else score? And I, it was like, and then she starts yeah. laughing. She starts <laughs> laughing. So it was actually kind yeah, of that's like, a good one. That's a good yeah. heckle. Yeah, it was a good heckle. Yeah. It was it was it was no, I was just like, bro, come on, dude. I knew I was at a family event, right? So I was like, I gave it a gentle heckle. If we're at NBA yeah. game, it's the finals, bro. I'm digging into those boys. But we're here at the girl <laughs> game. You know what I mean? There's little kids everywhere. I'm I, you know, it's a different vibe. I, I know how to I know how to nice heckle, okay? But hey, let's like talk about the elephant in the room, all right? How about Kendrick Lamar's diss track against Drake? Uh, where okay, and he's already laughing because he knows where I'm going with this, all right? We watched a dance group of I would say what plus maybe five year old, three year olds, three or three, three, I didn't maybe know three year old, like sixteen year old dance troupe of young black girls. I uh, danced to that certified pedophile song. It was very shocking. It was uh, something that can only happen in Los Angeles. And I mean, when I say dancing, 
There was a lot of suggestive themes in this dance. I was kind of shocked at the thing. And if there wasn't so many lesbians to counteract uh, the the entire (laughs) vibe in the room, I think that it would be offensive. It would be offensive. I wouldn't let Violet do that dance. So they had like first they had like the fifty year old dance squad, right? Fifty year old, like, and then and then they had another like 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 the geriatric dance team, and then they were like giving up for like the black girls from Compton, right? And then no, 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 no. I said that no because it was some janky ass old people dancing, right? Then it was like some uh, little like white kids dancing. I was like, boo. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> when the girls took the floor, I was like, oh, finally the black kids are here. Now yeah, we're going to see some dancing. But then they put Tedrick Lamar, and I was like, uh-oh. He did. Uh, he, goes, he goes, really? finally, it's the black kids. We got some talent, right? <laughs> like, like, oh. like, like, <laughs> dude, then. I'm going to say, is it racist if I'm saying they do something good? Like, no, I'm just no, saying. it's not. No, I know it's not. The no, there's no such thing as positive. Yeah. 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 Everything. Everything in this. Yeah. Everything's racist right. these days. Dude, you're then, right. You're right, Noah. Then, right, then Leslie Jones is meeting with, uh, it's Leslie Jones, that the soccer player girl, the, the, uh, the one with the blonde hair that like. Uh, well, Leslie like, Jones is the black chick from East Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. She's like the yeah. math. She's basically like the team, the Jack Nicholson yeah. uh, team. Like, yeah. like she's up oh, there. Not even, bro. She's like, bro, she's like the VP of marketing for the Sparks. Bro. Yeah, she's like on the bench. You mentioned the team name, the yeah. LA Sparks. Yeah, so, badass so team. It's, yeah. it's her, the Rappin' Poe, whatever her name is, the, the soccer player. Megan Rapp- Rapp- Megan yeah. Rappin' Poe and Kathy Griffin are all there together. Yeah. And then oh, lesbian, yeah. and then, then Mayhem goes, what is this, a who's who of lesbians? He goes, he goes, <laughs> he goes, Why are you saying all my lines in my voice all fucked up, bro? He goes, what are we here to yeah, yeah. counteract the testosterone? Dude, it, like... It, we're like, getting the testosterone. Dude, everyone around us is laughing. Everyone's laughing at him. Yeah. Like, like he, he's, he doesn't even... And he goes, why is everyone laughing? I'm not even saying anything funny. Uh, I'm just telling the truth, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving a play by play of what was going on around us. So wait, like, everyone, so everyone is laughing. No one's getting offended. People aren't nah, saying shit. It was, it was, it was well, all because, like, like, see, he, he's saying it. He's saying it in this like cartoon voice that like we, seems offensive. <laughs> but the way I was saying it yeah. was like nice. Like I was like, oh. you know, it was, it was, it was like, all it was all Mexicans and black people around us. I was like, oh wow, hey. I, I was surprised. Hey. Yeah, the the insane the. Insane. Insane to not defend, you know. No, no. Plus, it was all black black girls and Mexicans around us, so they were dying laughing at mayhem, you know. Yeah, they didn't understand understand what he's saying, anyways. (laughs) No, then they kicked us out of our seats. Then we got kicked out of our seats for sneaking down. We didn't get listen. We like, oh, oh, whoops, uh, our mistake. But like, one we were there for like two quarters, yeah, like one lady. Probably like the lesbian girlfriend of one of the people on the team, yeah. Like showed up for her seat. Was like, oh, oh my god, you guys are. All she had to do was talk to us, but she talked to the security, and then yeah. we were out of there. Yeah, we and then they came swarming through. All right, they well, the next swarming. time we go, we're we taking Don. Fr- next time we go, we're taking Don Fry. <laughs> we're taking <laughs> Don Fry. We're taking Don Fry. To L.A. Spark. I don't know, bro. I'm gonna have to scrape up eleven dollars. Dude, come on. How much? <laughs> how much fun was it, Jason? Well, you know what? I'm gonna say eight out of ten. Yeah. Eight out of ten. Yeah. That's pretty the good. only thing that could have only thing that could have made it better is if I got the same lesbian haircut you got. Dude, he had me, Jason, I gotta say, you had me laughing the whole time. He had me seriously, yeah. Bill, I was cry I was crying laughing. Just yeah, at his he face, was crying, yeah. just at his face alone of just like what are we first it was like, what are we doing here? And and, yeah, and yeah. then it was like it was just such a ridiculous it was it was just ridiculous. The whole thing was ridiculous. Now, Bill, yeah. you you took your daughter to do jujitsu. Yeah, I tried. I took her to uh, Tim Kennedy's place in uh, in near Austin, and um, I just wanted a picture of her in the gi. I thought that'd be so cute. She wouldn't wear the gi. She's what? a bougie bitch. She's like, no, I don't want to wear that. No, She's, I was like, okay. So Jamie Kilstein, I don't know if you know Jamie, he's a comic. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a black belt, but he 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 teaches the kids there. So he let her go on with just her, her little romper. 
I sent you the video, right? It's like every kid's in the gi lined up. My daughter's like in a fucking romper, like sprawled around. Did she like, did she like the grappling part or did she like the rolling around? Or? Well, they didn't get to the grappling part. Oh, what do they do? Yeah. How, how do you do jujitsu without grappling? I know. Well, it's weird because I kind of think like I was like how he was doing like stand up stuff, like grabbing wrists and stuff. And I'm like, why would a three to five year old want to do stand up? No. Like they just want to roll around on the floor. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so she left, she left halfway through. She just walked off the mat and went to like the playroom they have for kids. Ma'am, you, you, so I don't you, know are, I... you fought Tim Kennedy, right? Yeah. Uh, twice or once? Twice. No. And you beat him twice? No, I lost the first match because he illegally kneed me in the back of the head. And instead of just ignoring it and keep fighting, I tried to bitch at the referee. I said, Hey man, you kneed me in the back of the head. And, uh, they uh, they didn't stop it. They didn't fucking uh, give them anything, and I learned a valuable lesson that day. Don't talk to the fucking ref. Just keep fighting. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, yeah, later on I, I had some redemption. Yeah, yeah. Tim Kennedy is like one of those uh, rare mm -hmm. human beings where uh, you know, oh, uh, like we just we both like fought the whole time, you know, and both of our fights were like there was no there was no quit in either of us. So it was a real test of will that. I, he gained a, you know, I beat him, but I had a lot of respect for him. It was like one of those, oh man, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard yeah, not to I respect why, that I guy. I see why he's I such mean, a, yeah, yeah. Just his life, and how, I mean, how many he's he's just like special forces in Afghanistan, like I have tours and yeah. shit. Right. I mean, look, he's doing a hard ass right? job that nobody wants to do. You know, that's like a that's like a that's a tough ass job to to take under for America. You know, yeah. um, when you when you sign up to something like this. And like, so you, you can't really uh, disrespect that that job because it's something that it, it may not be popular with everybody, but when you fight for the country, you, you don't get a say in what you're doing. You have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy when uh, when he fought yeah. Kelvin Gastelum and like I think Kelvin missed weight or something, and they were like, Tim's gonna teach him a lesson. He wants to teach him a lesson. And then Kelvin just beat the crap <laughs> yeah. out of him. <laughs> and it was like, uh, I'm not really sure he's getting oh, sorry, right now. Um I'm like doing a show right now. Oh uh, uh, by, by the way, uh let me mute this. Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask Mayhem a, 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 a crazy yeah. story about uh when he when he hosted Bully Beatdown. Remember Bully yeah. Beatdown? And yeah. um yeah. They had that one guy on loose to the bully. Hey, uh, it's your, uh, when he, when oh, I don't know. Maybe he's on. Uh, Spain, or you got better. Is the SWAT team at yeah. his house again? What happened? I don't know. I, he's he's talking to somebody. Um, he's having a party. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. On his air mattress. He's having a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bridal. Watched, he's having a bridal shower. Did you guys watch the <laughs> Nate Diaz versus uh, Masvidal fight? I didn't watch all that. No, how was that? It, you know what? I thought it was going to be terrible. They sold 18,000 tickets. I'm like, 18,000 people came to watch this. And it was an amazing fight. It's almost sometimes better when you have two MMA guys and one guy is not a boxer. I feel like when you have a boxer versus an MMA guy, it, it, it just, it's weird. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like the, the MMA yes. guy can't seem to catch up to the boxer, you know? And he gets outboxed or out this or that. No, never. Um, for the most part, right. but it was a great fight. It was probably one of the fights of the year. They gave it to Nate Diaz. Nate landed more punches, but the punches weren't as hard, but he landed so many punches. I mean, he was just throwing the entire time. The thing is that it's almost like he throws arm punches and in yeah. MMA, when you have four ounce gloves, those can really hurt you. I feel like in boxing, sometimes when you have your gloves are, are more padded and like you're not setting your feet, it didn't hurt as much, although he did, you know, connect a lot. And they gave it to Nate Diaz. Some people thought Masvidal should have won because he landed the. I feel like a lot of people said Masvidal won. He landed the, the harder punches, but but Nate was just throwing so many punches. Uh, yeah. And and it was it was mostly people that, that were there for Nate. Like Nate had, you know, the eighteen thousand people. I'm surprised only eighteen thousand people. That seems a little. That's pretty light. <laughs> yeah, right, they, they sold it out. Oh, they sold it out. I think so. It was like the Honda Center. It was packed. 18,000 oh, people watched two MMA I, guys box each other. That's true. How many did Jake, Jake Paul's events take? How many people not, watched not those? Even, not, even, not even close to that. Um, oh, really? Okay. But yeah, it was a good, it was a good fight. Don, Don I think you would have liked it. 
uh, it was just they were just throwing punches yeah. all, I mean the whole time and uh, there was definitely bad blood um, afterwards Nate called out Jake Paul he called out Masvidal again uh, for another one uh, he called out uh, somebody else um, I, he wants to go back to the UFC and fight Leon Edwards again uh, Mayhem what did you think of the fight I gotta ask to unmute you uh Dean's always in shape. Man. All right. Yeah. Uh yeah, I thought of the fight like, well, okay. I mean, there's a couple of arguments about it, you know, and it was like what, an exhibition match? What I think was that, you know, they kind of gave it to the uh the person that they wanted to give it to instead of maybe the guy that deserved it. I don't know. Um, some people are saying it's a mockery of boxing. But in my opinion, you know, it was a good, fun fight. It wasn't like they were going – it wasn't the Anderson jail fight where they were just like – yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, it was one of those kind of matches where, um, I don't know, you know, maybe the fans won that fight, really, right. you know. But did they? I don't know. There, there's a lot of mm-hmm. argument about it. And to, to me, I thought it was just a good old one old time. Like, fine. You know, to me, it's nice to not have much invested – about a fight where you're just like, ah, let's you have a good one. And it was a good one. You know, overall, I like, good job. Uh, who, who threw that? Masvidal? Like, he I think it was put Masvidal that fight on? Or? You know, it was, I think the Jake Paul fight helped Nate a lot because I think getting, I think that first boxing match for an MMA guy is hard. The first one's always hard. Uh, same with bare knuckle boxing. These guys go to bare knuckle boxing and yeah. they don't know what to expect. But then after they had a couple yeah, fights under their belt, one. it's a whole different thing. Don, how many boxing matches did you have? I had eight. What was your record? It, it only eight boxing. I think um two, five, and one. I wasn't very good. Oh, wow. You know, I I won the won the first two, won the first two, and then just went to shit. You know, just <laughs> uh, didn't train. Had a bad had a bad marriage. Had a bad mother in law. You know, so had no support. So you know, I didn't put anything into it. I just showed up. Yeah, people don't get it. They're like, man, you, you're out. Your external life is such an important part of like fighting. Like you have to have like a stable environment yeah. where you can just focus on training all the time and like have like a nice camp each yeah. time. If you don't, if you don't, your whole life, it sucks. You just like, you know, the, the fights I lost the majority of the time. I had some type of distraction or some type of like something else keeping me off of the uh, focus yeah. where you can yeah. constantly train and consistent consistency. You know, you need like a whole camp where your your body gets to work as hard as it can and then recover as good as it can. And then your brain is focused on the task at hand instead of something where, you know, you're like maybe oh. training hard one day and then you're like everywhere, you know, and then you can't recover well and then don't get a good practice the next day. It, it, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. Well, being a pro athlete, yeah, being a pro athlete is one of the selfiest things in the world, you know. It's all about you 24 hours a day. And, you know, when somebody brings their fucking problems into your fucking training, you know, then it just fucks up your training completely. So what was wrong with your mother, oh, yeah. Don? Because their 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 issues. Their what? What was wrong with your mother in law? What's that? You said you had a bad mother in law. Oh, was she that? was always yeah. She was always bringing my wife in the other room and whispering, you know, and, uh, blah, 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 you know the, the back behind the scenes whispering. You know, he's no good. He's not doing this. He should be doing this. You know, he's not. You know, you deserve better. You know that kind of shit. You know. God, which, and then what did you say? Uh, uh, and Don, what did you say when that happened? Uh, I didn't say anything. I was trying to fucking fight, you know. I was trying yeah. to ignore it, you know. By the way, Don is such a manly man, right? He showed up to my show, mm-hmm. Bill, with a guy that I and I assumed he knew the guy forever, right? Like they seemed like they were good friends. Mm-hmm. And I go, "Oh, how do you know Don?" He goes, "I met him an hour ago, and now he's making me drive him everywhere." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. that. That's yeah. it. so. You just t- told the guy you're my driver. No, well, we just he bought me a beer. I was eating sauce. I was eating sushi. 
And, you know, he's a fan. He sent me a beer. I walked over there thanking for it, you know. And you know, I said, fuck this. He said, what are you doing, you know? And <laughs> I said, nothing. Uh, I just got done eating. I said, well, you know, you want to go, go to a comedy show? I got a couple <laughs> tickets. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, then the UFC flies him out the next day. They fly, fly him to do the whole thing, signs autographs all day. And I call him up. The fight started at three. I call him up at like four because I wanted my my daughter to meet him. And, Hello, Don, you sleeping? Not anymore. I go, you know, the fight started an hour ago. Oh, well, I guess I missed those ones. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, stick around. I had to stick around and meet your daughter. Oh, uh, it was the best. It was everywhere we went. A, may, may, mayhem has a very similar thing. We're like everywhere we go, guys, uh, guys like, turn into like little girls, like around them, like uh, girls, nah. girls. They turn into bros, bro. You're trying to like end it in a weird way. Like uh, I don't know. I try to be bros with everybody. I try now. I used to like to like be a fucking psychopath, but like I, I got over that. It's like a really uh sad way to live your life, you know? Yeah, yeah but I know what you're talking about. Like, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, so I'm not that good of a friends with those guys. But, um, yeah, you know, like, I don't know. There's a good... I like to keep a good vibe going, you know what I'm saying? That's why I felt so weird at the Lesbian Olympics. Because it was like a strange thing where I didn't even get to... There's no hardly dudes there. We were the only dudes there, man. And then that, and then the kid cam came on. I put my arm around Adam because I was trying to get us to make out on camera. Yeah, he was trying yeah. to do the kiss cam. I was like, this is a, Jason, I, I did. I, I, did. But then I, felt, I felt Adam. I felt Adam was uncomfortable about it, so I stopped. I was like, ah, oh, man. He really wanted I, to do the kiss then, cam. I, yeah, yeah. No, no. But the thing was, I did at first. Right, I was brave. At first, I put my arm around you, and I was waiting for them to come over. But then I started thinking about it. I'm like, am I really going to kiss Adam if they come over? And I went, eh. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not committed to this bit. I'm not committed to this bit. <laughs> so so uh, it, it would have been, yeah. been a good bit. It would have been a good bit. So yeah, I mean, yeah, another zero so if, to that. Yeah. If they would have snapped to me, though, if they would have snapped right to it. You were getting sexually assaulted, bro. I, I, I know what I felt that. Right you know what? You know what? I felt that, Bill, and I was looking away. You know, like you know how. Like, yeah, he was. He was. He was. Uh, I can't. You know, I got dissed by my comedy partner, bro. I can't even get a make out from my comedy buddy, man. What's For a that? viral hey, clip, yeah. come on. Have it, have it, have it. Josh Dollar would have done it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he yeah, would have. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, would have. So in oh, MMA news, man, Rampage funny. says that he might have a boxing match against Rashad Evans in Atlanta, Georgia, November 8th for one championship. Uh, wow. Do we like this idea? Yeah, yeah why not? I mean, we just saw Jorge Masvidal and them uh, have a great fight. You know what I mean? Uh, these guys are up, up more in age, but why not? I think they'll. I think they'll give us good show. I'll be badass. Rashad versus Rampage. That that, that need to happen. Yeah. Why not? Uh, Why, well, what are you thinking? I think that if Rampage, well, what, what, what's wrong with it? They're just too old. Well, R well, Rampage came in like seventy-five pounds overweight against Fedor. I mean, it might have been a hundred pounds. Ah, but now, but he ain't though. But he ain't now. I've seen him recently. He's oh, not good. a fat fuck like he was. He's just good. Big, yeah. Good. As long as he comes yeah. in shape. Because I know Rashad's going to come in shape. Um, but when yeah. one person's in shape and the other one is it, that's when it sucks. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, I'm all for it. You know, I'm all for guys making a lot of money after the UFC and after they can't. I think that's great. And I think that's the money that they should have made while they were fighting. So if they can do it, great. Um, Don, what do you think? Rampage versus Rashad. Who do you think wins? Uh, I think uh, November 8th is a bad day, bad juju. You know, uh, why is uh, my ex wife's birthday? So, oh, yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's just a bad, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's not good. Oh, by the way, Don, this is the day, the day that the, the passage way to hell, the passage way to hell is wide open, you know. Oh, oh by my way. god, <laughs> why are you traumatizing Don Fry right now, bro? Come on, <laughs> no, god damn it, about his figures, dude. You need to be sensitive about Don Price. Trigger, By the way, right? there was a video yeah. of Don, this girl at the convention. Fucking poor Don. He goes to the convention. 
some girl with like triple D tits, right? The biggest tits nice. I've ever seen goes, hey, Don, rubs it in his face. And then Don like says hello, looks down for a second. And then they were like, Don, could it last? Of course, the clip goes viral. The UFC.com posts it. It gets 3 million hits. Uh, Don, do you get in trouble? <laughs> for that I didn't want it. Did you get in trouble for that? No, what? Did you get in trouble for that? Clip? No, no, I didn't. Um, for my girlfriend, you mean? Yeah, yeah. For Wait, what's the, the gay? Oh, it was a gay then. It was like a thing where you, like, they wanted to see if MMA fighters look at this kidney. Yes. That, that, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Viral, yeah, uh, viral. Okay, okay. That's pretty funny. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have lasted. Yeah, just even saying double D's, I'm googling them right now. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I'm like we're fucking. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Oh, dirty dogs. Yeah, they're, they're money well spent. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is money well spent, man. They were they were done. They were done right. But I'm like poor Don. All he does <laughs> is go to the convention to sign autographs, and then he's got a fucking like a. a Porn star in his face with her boyfriend, yeah, and then all of a sudden the U and then the know, UFC yeah. posts it. Uh, like he doesn't deserve that, like nonsense, you know. So, but uh, yeah. Um, but like, again, Adam, you, you and I would kill that. for a viral clip. Uh, yeah, no, he didn't even. Don didn't even know it went viral. He didn't even know that anyone recorded it. I had to tell him about it. He goes, "Oh yeah, that's what I, that's what that was for." I had no. <laughs> like, well, there's that all, that <laughs> meme. That meme that I, I sent you, and I'm sure you must know about Dom, and I feel like a piece of shit, shit, I should know the throw as a black belt, but the throw where you uh, oh. you go on your back, you flip him over your head, it's a, what's it called? I forget. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That clip of you doing it to that guy, I mean, that guy but, must have gone like 10 feet in the air. And you're doing an yeah, instructional yeah. video. Cal Worsham. <laughs> yeah, the late that, Cal Worsham. Uh, he was great. Man. He was great. That, that meme is everywhere. Oh, shit. What's the matter, yes. Jason? Yeah. He's, they're watching me. Step just in the dog, sir. Um, all right. They're so watching you. Uh oh. They're, uh oh. There they are. What happened? I see them. All right. No, so I was just not you the I thought you guys were I guess not. Are you that paranoid that the cops are looking for you? It. Nah. Man, listen, definitely not. <laughs> All right, so uh, we we got some fan mail, by the way. So podcast oh, topic. I remember hearing Don Fry had a fan of in course. Japan. About uh, there was a fan that you had, Don, in Japan that was six foot two, 250 pounds, that would follow you around for autographs. At one point, you wanted Don's underwear yeah. and for you to sign your underwear. Uh, what happened? Somebody yeah. wanted, is that true, Don? Uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. And they like, get go kick rocks, kid. You're out of here, you know. Sure. <laughs> yeah, they, Wait, they, he, he wanted you yeah. to sign his underwear. Is that what I heard? My underwear. Why don't you sign my underwear and give him my underwear? What? Why not, bro? I'll do that right now. For but, but, I mean, it's for but money. For, Come on, yeah. why not? <laughs> but for, well, the thing is, the guy says that you never talk about it in the interviews. But this guy knows about it. Is this the guy that was following you around? Like, how does he know about this guy that was following you around asking you for your underwear? Don, did you give him your underwear or no? No, they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> my, my underwear is sacred, man. Are you kidding me? They're <laughs> sacred. They contain, they contain DNA from a deity. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> His shit stands yeah, go on eBay for five grand. Uh, Yo, how much for a can't, your mustache? Can't just like, I'm right. gonna build a clone army, uh, Don Fry, <laughs> un unstoppable Don Fry clone army. That's how I'm gonna take over in 2025. That's my project, 2025. So speaking of that, uh, <laughs> uh, MMA news: uh, Dana White is gonna speak at the Republican National Convention right before Whoa. right before Trump accepts his nomination. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, good. Good. Uh, yeah, that's I personally. Think for Dana. But, wait, isn't Dana a lifelong Democrat? He switched. No, he no, he's uh, he. Uh, no. last time he always speaks. No, he's, he's buddies. He's. No, I'm buddies. saying, but before he was a Democrat. Yeah, he's buddies time. with Trump. He was friends with Obama, wasn't he? Uh, but yeah, but him no. and Trump are, like really close. No, I don't know. Him and Trump uh, are really close. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I get it. Yeah, because the celebrity thing. So, like, yeah, Donald Trump is a bigger celebrity than Obama. So I, I understand. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think, like, back in the day, no no one, when back when UFC was banned, Trump was one of the only people to do it at Trump Casino. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think he was one of the yeah. only guys to do it back then. So I think that they've been friends since then. Yo, what's up, people? I got to talk to you about game time. Okay, gametime.co, all right? I'm telling you, I'm excited for the NBA playoffs. It's been the best season of basketball I can recall in a long time. Super pumped about it. And Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier, which is great. I mean, I, who would want to go to a playoff game? Now, prices on Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. I mean, normally you, you would think it would go up. Nope. Going down and with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Trust me, you don't want to go there and all of a sudden you're behind. You can't can't see anything. That that, that would suck. All right. Uh check out the game time app. Uh, I know there's a great bunch of NBA games uh coming up uh right now, tonight. It's uh the Knicks. The Knicks are playing um the Sixers and the Knicks got this. Okay. And I would love to go to that game. Okay. I, I would, that would be amazing. I'm, I'm from New York. So obviously I got to go for the Knicks and the Lakers and pretty much whoever else is winning. All right. And uh, I'm telling you, they got last minute deals. They got flash deals, zone deals, easy to find. You could buy MLB tickets and for every kind of event in your area, they got views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, Job loss protection. If you get fired, you can't make it. Something happens. All right. Now, you could save up to 60% buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater. All right. I know you guys love the theater, especially this audience, Broadway. You guys uh, love Shakespeare. I'm sure we got some, some very Shakespeare people. All right. Now, and uh, they also have in-app deals. They got zone deals. Save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats. You got all in pricing. This feature shows uh, total upfront. No surprise. That's the worst when you go to other things and all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is a great deal. And you get there and it costs you an arm and a leg. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Now download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. That's great. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. All right. Check it out. I'm telling you, this is it. This is what you want to do. Do it now. All right. And I'll also enjoy the rest of this podcast. Uh, oh, Jake, wow. Jake Paul wants to fight Mike Perry in PFL MMA after they box. So Jake Paul is boxing Mike Perry and then he wants to fight him in MMA. Uh, I think in bare knuckle really? boxing, Mike Perry wins against anyone in the world. Um, in regular yeah, boxing, in regular boxing, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but I think Jake Paul wins. In MMA, really? in regular boxing, uh, uh, people don't realize the difference between regular boxing and bare knuckle boxing. It's almost two of different. Of course, sports. of course, it's almost two different yeah. sports. Um, yeah. And in MMA, I would give it to Mike Perry. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, that's an interesting but, argument. I, I, I'm glad we're talking about this because I, I just found out about it like right before we went on. And I was like, oh, what the hell? I'm like, that's a bold statement, but it's also kind of seems like trolling from Jake Paul. Because Jake is like a clever businessman, but I think he knows that his mixed martial arts skills are limited at this time. It's not like, I, I don't know, maybe he's been in the lab in secret training uh, wrestling takedown defense and Doing, you know what I mean? Like uh, jiu-jitsu undercover. But it kind of seems as if Mike Perry would just smash him at MMA. Then again, Mike Hold on one second. You got to talk about yourself. Like, Hold on one second. What's the matter? Oh, he just <laughs> took off. I Okay. Well, I was already talking. He just shut yeah. me the fuck up. <laughs> anyway, Jake Paul, I don't know. I don't know what your take on it is, John. But like, uh, you know, it's one of those things where if you ain't been wrestling for a while, you kind of get rusty at it. There's no right. other way to describe it. And, you know, even though Jay Paul right. is like young, strong dude, and he's like working out, you know, you see he put on a lot of muscle mass 
he's like a big beast of a dude. And he's gonna fight Perry, who's kind of considerably smaller. In a in a mixed martial arts match, I, I believe that like the takedown will become like a huge factor. If you haven't been doing wrestling uh yeah, consistently right. for a good amount of time, you're probably gonna get taken down and choke the fuck out, you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What's you guys' thoughts? Well, just just having somebody having somebody on top of you that weighs, you know. 30, 50, 60 pounds more, that takes a hell of a lot out of you, even psychologically. You know, when once that guy's on top of you, psychologically, it takes a lot out of you, you know, but physically, it just beats you. Yeah. Is Wait, Jake even I, belted? I my... Is Jake belted in nah. Jiu Jitsu at all? Nah, I don't even think he has. I don't know. Yeah, I think I might have seen him do some Jiu Jitsu at some school and he posted a little bit. But, you know, I'm not super social media dude where I'm. Like stalking Jake Paul all week, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I all, but all I know is he's tapped into boxing for a good stretch of time. Where he, you know, he's gotten good at boxing, so that means he's put all his effort into boxing, and it's where all of his money has come from. So it doesn't seem to me that it'll be like um, you know suddenly become a mixed martial arts fighter. So I don't even know why he's trolling us with this. Like he, you know, he should have fought mixed martial arts a long time ago, mm-hmm. but money dictates that he's in there like swimwear with the damn boxing matches all the time. Celebrity boxing has paid his friggin' bills. Anyway, what? No, I no, what no, no, I was they, no, they, they, might, they might fly me out for the Republican National Convention to do boxing. Excellent. News. So, congratulations. Nice, congratulations. Hey, congratulations. bro, will you get Donald Trump to sign these underwear I got? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Okay, okay, good. I got to sign a cowboy hat for me. So, uh, but I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for. I'm sorry for walking. Sorry for leaving you guys for a second. So, sorry about that. That was not the most professional. Nah, no stress, buddy. We um, oh, show fell. Show fell apart without you. Believe me. <laughs> no, the show just fell off. Like nobody knows what happened to the show. I don't think the show is ever going to recover. It. Meanwhile, dude, I get. We may not have yeah, the fans, but I have, I have people that thank me. Go, hey, listen. Just so you know, your show gets you through my week. You have no idea. I have the worst day ever. Your show gets me through my. I, I was like, I was beyond depressed. I laugh more at your show. I get more people that say that to me than anything I've ever done. So, uh, and, uh, oh, that's weird, bro. I get the exact opposite. <laughs> I get people like, your show makes me want to kill myself. I was like, damn, bro. I was giving them suicide prevention hotline numbers. I'm sorry you have to live in MMA roasted. Thanks for the message. Don't kill yourself. So, Jason, uh, what, speaking of which, what are your thoughts on Ryan Garcia? So, I don't know if you know this, Don. Ryan oh, Garcia. But, listen. Is this is a? I'm gonna catch Don up. He's a boxer that was yeah, like, from the Grateful uh, Dead. No, he's this guy that was like a ten time national champion boxer. He was undefeated. He was the next big thing. De La Hoya signed him, and then he lost to Tank. That that guy tanked by body shot in like the biggest fight of his life. Right? People were writing him off, and then all of a sudden he he goes on uh social media and just starts going crazy like. Um, he, I'm drunk. I'm doing this, that. He fights Devin Haney. Everyone thinks Devin Haney's going to kill him. He goes out and just runs through Devin Haney and says he was acting. It was all an act. And then Ariel Hawani says, shame on all these people. Like, like Teddy Atlas was saying, they shouldn't let him fight. The guy's got mental problems. I heard he was in a rehab. And then, uh, what's his name? Hawani took up for him and said, look, he, this guy was acting the whole time. So since his fight against Devin Haney, which he looked great, he got banned from the WBA last week for making for saying the N word a bunch of times, saying all this stuff about Muslims. He got arrested last week for breaking into his baby mama's house because he he wanted to see the kid and she wouldn't let him, and he trashed the house. The guy seems like he's on this downward spiral. Um, he's all over social media, but he's beyond talented. Uh, Jason, what do you think about this guy? Oh, bro, I'm the resident expert on going off the rails and being insane. <laughs> this seems exactly that, you know, I, bro, I identify with this kid so much. You know, I really get it because your professional life can be going really good and uh, your personal life can just get spiral out of control. And I think a big part of it is, you know, and a lot of people are saying, oh, a head injury and this and that, but I really think that, dude, 
when you're like a professional athlete, I had to go through this real bad. Okay, the usual thing for, uh, you know, normal people is, you know, you turn 18, you go to college, right? You go and you mm. drink with all your friends, and you have older guys that teach you how to drink. And like, ah, you don't drink too much, you don't drink too often, you got to get to class, and either you figure it out and you go through college fine, or you flunk out of college and fuck up and then go, man, I can't, I got to stop drinking. And then you go to the community college, right? It's like <laughs> kind of like the normal thing. That's what happens, right? For a professional athlete, what happens a lot of times is you never drink until you're super successful. Then you have all the money in the world for all the drinks in the world and all the cocaine and all the drugs and all the women. And, all, and it's an overwhelming thing that happens where, You've, now you're super famous, can get any girl you want, you can get any drug you want, any drink you want, and, like, you never have been taught that discipline in this nerdy way of, yeah, you know, uh, we get messed up, but then we go to work on Monday. Nah, this guy has just been on a tear for, like, since the Haney fight, even even before, some would argue, and what, what I'm witnessing, and, you know, I, I don't know him, I ain't hung out with him, I hope he gets it together. I, I actually I reached out to him because he's talking about doing mixed martial arts. I reached out. I said, "Yo, bud, I'm coaching right now. Come see me, you know." And I would like to come see him and give him a fucking front headlock and rub his face in the ground and go, "Hey, dude, let's uh, take it easy on that weed. Hey, let's take it easy on that drinking. Hey, let's take it easy. Let's, how about we put that in the background for put it away for a training camp? Okay, let's do a mock training camp so you can figure out what you want to do with your future." Because, all right, you know, you got a bunch of money right now, you know. That's sure, sure. But it's not going to bring you any happiness if you're just burning it out with alcohol or burning it out with weed all the time. I know firsthand. It will just ruin your whole life. You're not going to get to see your kids no more. You're going to just be in this weird, like, outcast. Uh, what, what, where were they called? Where did they, where did they put the Ninja Turtles? Uh, like, the no zone or something like yeah. that? That's where you're going to be for a uh, for a, for a long time, dude. You're going to be in the, the out world with Baraka. And, you know, you're not going to get to do anything that you really want to do. But you're going to get to be high. You're going to get a drunk. You're going to get to bang some randos. You know, you can. You have to choose. You have to choose, Ryan Garcia. you got to choose which path you want to go. And if you want to keep staying on that one, nah. Now, Don, you're, you're Don, did you have... With the that's results. A, Jason, that's an excellent point. Don, did you have any... Did Dan Severn ever... Take you aside and say you're fucking up. No, no, Dan. Um, Dan always uh, minded his own business, you know. Um, and uh, he, he, you know, he had his own, he had his own shit going down. You know, he didn't have time to nurse nurse made me. But when you were taking like those like twenty seven painkillers before your fights, did anyone tell you? Hey Don, maybe yeah. it's not the thing to do before the fight. Yeah, fuck. One time, um, my ex-wife called up Bill Goldberg and and Rocco Sirtoli, my oh, hands man. guy, and because he found my found my bottle of pills and a bottle of tequila, you know, in my gear bag, and um, they took it, and so then I went out. They took it the night before the fight. So then I stayed up all night long, you know, couldn't restless, you know, going through free free withdrawals. Uh, and then um then I started going through withdrawals during the fucking fight. You know? So oh. I, I got I got beat up by a by a fucking yeah, I got beat up by a fucking um ham and egger, which I should have killed, you know, but I fucking a ham and egger. Never heard that before. Couldn't couldn't <laughs> Um, who was, oh, yeah. um, wait, why would, why would, now your wife took your pills, took your alcohol. What did, what did, what did Bill Goldberg have to do with this? We would have put it in the door. Okay. <laughs> she gave it, she gave it to Bill and Rocco. And they uh, said, you know, we got your, we took your pills, you know. And, and I thought, okay, great. You know, I didn't know, I didn't know it was going to be that bad. <laughs> do you think you would have won if you would have had the pills and the alcohol? Oh, fuck yes. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. 
You know, I, mean, I stayed up all night long. I couldn't sleep that the night before. And then I had a 7 a.m. Finally got to sleep, um, like about uh, 5. And I had a 7, a 7 a.m. interview. So I had to get up and do the interview. And then, then you're busy. You know, you're fucking busy the whole day. You know, um, doing I, I mean, interviews. And I shit understand like that. why your wife you would know? do that, but yeah, I so. could have given you half the pills or a third of the pills or some of the pills. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, they were they were fucking stupid, right? Right. Well, nobody nobody knew. You know anything? They didn't know about addiction that time or dependency. You know, I wasn't addicted. I was dependent on the shit, and um, you know they didn't know about dependency and withdrawals and all that bullshit. You know, I, I, remember I, Mayhem, I, remember, I remember when Mayhem. I remember Mayhem kept lighting his his furniture on fire, uh, the last time, <laughs> and uh, and they called me and they're like, "Hey, can you come and control Jason? He's lighting all the furniture on fire." And uh, I so I was going to stage an intervention, and I called six people, six of the toughest guys that I knew. And not one of them would come. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Fuck!" I, I got. I remember that. More people hung up on me so fast. I was like, "Hey, listen, we gotta help Jason. He's going through some shit. He can't take all six of us." Like, I think like, I'll take. Oh, <laughs> uh, you don't know, bro. You don't know, bro. I get retard space sometimes. I go psycho, bro. Yeah, no, I. We're gonna be in the back of the line. Hold the phone. Dude, I had I had friends start yeah. talking Chinese to me. Like, no, I think I called you, Bill, and you said no. You asked. You did call me, but you didn't call me to help. I think you called me for advice. You're like, hey, do you know any tough guys, Bill, that can help me yeah, with this was, situation? I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. No, nobody, nobody would come with me. <laughs> nobody. They're like, wait. Yeah. Uh, I, I was like, anyway. I'm like, listen. I, I think that we could all. I had like I had like a nine person list. It was like. Not what you remember, you, you know, like in Happy, uh, and in, in that what was that like Billy Madison when he, Steve Buscemi has that list of people he's gonna kill, and he just kind of like, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. that was the list of people to help me with the mayhem, with the mayhem intervention, and, and I just kept one, two, three, yeah, it didn't, and that's when you realize comics are pussies, dude. It was it was fighters too. It wasn't just comics. It was like trained fighters. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them were like heavyweights. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, they're like, fuck that. Uh, you yeah. should be very flattered, Mayhem. People are terrified of you. How oh, terrible. Well, look, I know. It was by design. I, I wanted everybody. I like, was very uh, angry and wanted everyone to be terrified of me. And now I'm like, oh, what an idiot. I shouldn't have done that. Hey, you live and, you live <laughs> and learn. Yeah. Uh, Dom, were any of your exes, were any of your exes uh, men afraid of you? Oh yeah, oh yeah, all of them were. You know, they were real brave. I had one one guy, you know, call me a cunt you know, on the on the phone. You're a cunt. You're a cunt. Yeah, I'll kick your ass. And then I read off his I, I read off his address, and he got a real quiet and hung up the bunk and bone. <laughs> oh, I love man. that. Yeah, dots the guy to him to his face. <laughs> oh man! Uh, so, uh, all right. What else happened? So yeah, yeah, they're they're tough when they're hundred miles away. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you tell them their address, yeah, you tell them you know where they live, then then, then, then changes their fucking perspective of the situation. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, uh, what else is going on right now? Uh, uh, the fights this week. There's UFC fights this week. Uh, if you guys know this. Rose well, we didn't even talk about 304, did we? Nah, but it's it's already passed. Uh, well, well, let's yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, this week, ESPN, UFC and ESPN 59, Rose Namajunas, right, uh, against Tracy Cortez. Tracy Cortez is probably the best-looking girl in MMA, uh, maybe ever. I don't know if you've ever seen her. Three years Rose. Three years Rose. 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 Uh, yeah, Rose well, Ro Rose. Hey, Rose. Rose got to grow her fucking hair. She, yeah. she got to grow her hair. She's gorgeous when she's got long hair. You know? I, I agree. I agree. She's a very pretty face, but this girl Tracy's next level. Uh, but yeah, uh, Rose should win. She's 11 uh, and 6 and 0, oh, but all her losses are like champions or former champions. Tracy's 11 and 1, um, but hasn't fought anyone that good. Um, 
Tracy, uh, I think her brother passed away from cancer and he inspired her to fight. She's a really nice person. She uh, she dated Brian Ortega and then Ortega got married. After. Who has it? But that's when you know a girl's hot when the guy gets married afterwards. Yeah. Uh, well, I have. <laughs> Uh, so they're they're fighting. Um, Drew Dober is on the Real card. Quick, is, is is Rose? Is she is she a little crazy? Is there something mentally off with her? They're all crazy. Story? They're all I feel like she's crazy. incredible, and then she's fucking very mediocre. Well, she's married to Pat Barry, or you know, remember Pat ba and and everyone always makes fun of him, or because I think he met her when she was young, like sixteen or seventeen. Or oh 15. yeah, and then Sean Strickland's always calling him a. A, a predator like uh, you know and just a groomer a, a groomer constantly trolling him uh and then um fighting with uh matt mitrione because mitrione had a uh, had pat barry's back uh but you know so so yeah and then i think yeah, wait what do you, wait let me ask okay because you're a coach what is the protocol for if you are coaching a girl because this is like, you know, Strickland is a troll. I, I got to take, take my hat off to him. He's a master troll. But it is Pretty strange good troll. That, that if I were to coach these little girls and then they grow up for me to date I think them. Any, I think anytime you're coaching. I, I can't imagine. All right, my opinion, you're coaching someone when they're 15, 16 years old. You meet them when they're a kid. They're a kid. And, and there's always going to be that like coach kid relationship. And I think that's. I think that you just you keep it as a coach and a kid, even if they're, you know, oh, if they're seventy years old and you're ninety, maybe or whatever it is, you know. Then make your move. Then make your move. <laughs> make a move. But when, but when they're it's 18, too late. But when they're eighteen or nineteen, <laughs> there's always that coach. You know, I, I you keep it away. But that yeah. being said, if you meet a girl when she's twenty seven and you're coaching her and you're thirty two, it's like you know what I'm saying that that shit happens. If they're, if they're, no, but what I'm saying is, all right, you're, you're coaching when she's 17, and then she's a pro fighter when she's 20. That's three years difference, right? Uh, I it's mean, fucking I mean, weird. That's all think, I'm saying. I think technically it's, it's legal, right? I mean, there's area, like, there's like, I know, e I know there's ethical and legal, right? There's ethical and legal, right? I, I, I think it's not ethical. So legally, it's okay, but on uh, ethically, it's not. I mean, what about your hero, Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, that was weird. That was a fucking weirdo. And he's not my hero. Super one. weird. But, but by the way, bro, can I say something so weird, weird about weird, that? Bro. Oh. 17 is still legal in New York, by the way. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's a pedophile, but I'm saying. No, but he's legal. He's a pedophile adjacent. Yeah, he's pedophilic. Yeah. <laughs> He's I mean, actually, like, uh, but, but then again, look, but then if they're, but they've been together for 20 years. So like if they're together 20 years, it's, and it, this we're also looking at it through 2024. Like, like back yes. in the day, people used to get married when they were like, uh, you know, like, like your grandparents met when they were 16. Uh, then, yeah. Oh, hey, you God. know, um, so, all right. And what do you just take, by the way, Jason? I'm taking my, I'm taking my dog five vitamins, bro. I'm going to get blitz yeah. and go spar everybody tonight. Don, did you ever have any uh, buddy that you coached like you? I feel like women would fall in love with you when you coached them. No, I never coached any women. Never coached any women. I wouldn't put myself in that position. Good man. You know? yeah. What about Bill? Yeah. Bill I don't. I don't. Mm. What about you, Bill? Jiu-Jitsu girls. Oh, I'm always trying to fuck jujitsu girls, but I'm not coaching them. <laughs> yeah, he really. If, you know, if there's a what, let me tell you something. If a hot really girl goes into a jujitsu room, everyone is like fucking vultures. It's so rare that there's a hot jujitsu girl that when it, when one pops in, everyone's just like, it's not. Yeah, I just I just single leg her and give her a ringworm on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. So um, also on this card, this card's kind of, I mean, Ponzinibbio against Muslim Salaka. I don't know who that guy is. Drew Dober, uh, Bonefim. That, that guy, Abdul mm. Razak Al Hassan, uh, is fighting Cody Brundridge. Cody's the guy that recently lost. I mean, it's not the greatest, it's not the deepest card. This girl, Maria Apovova, who said she was homeless a couple weeks ago, uh, she's on the card. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, it's not a go up, build on. You got a place to live. You can live in his garage if you're a jiu jitsu girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there's never any wrestling girls, uh, you know, res- B and Flo. Um, but yeah, you're right. Oh, the- yeah, Samu Manuka. Dot com backslash, I mean, slash mayhem. I keep saying backslash. SamuManuka.com slash mayhem for your Samu Manuka honey. I, 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 I'm I required by contract to do that once upon a time. Now, Bill, when you roll with a girl, right, do you let her win? Well, I mean, the, the one time, I think I told you the story, the one time that I went out, I was rolling this, like, Russian blue belt, and I kind of gave her the position for a ch- clock choke. So she's, I gave her the setup. And I'm like, well, I'll give it to her, and then I'll get out. And then in my head, I got out. But the next thing you know, I'm on my knees and everyone in the dojo is like staring at me like, are you okay? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you went out. I'm like, no, I didn't. I'm just sitting there. What are you talking about? I went out. And my voice was really small. I was like, I didn't go out. I, I was, I was rolling. Yeah. I went out for like two seconds on my knees. So you're a so, black uh, belt. You're a black belt and a blue belt. No, this girl. is when I was a purple belt. Oh, a blue belt girl <laughs> choked you out and you're a black belt. Well, now <laughs> I got to tell you, so some of these girls are feisty. <laughs> and they used their claws. Would you ever let a blue belt girl choke you out that wasn't sexual? I mean, I let a no belt girl choke me unconscious, but then woke up with her tongue in my butt like oh. I was pooping on the yellow brick road. Dude, the, <laughs> dude, dude, Mayhem has gotten so much. Dude, he used to call me up. I'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, I had a rough day. Well, I was fighting with somebody. Something happened. Uh, you know, I forgot to put the laundry in. He's like, dude, I could totally relate. What happened? Uh, I was choking a girl and I was fucking her and she asked me to drown her. And, and then uh, I, she accidentally went under. So I had to give her mouth to mouth and then fucking she started spitting up. I'm like, dude, this is fucking nothing like my day. I like these cockamamie stories that you make up. But, you know, that was close enough to the truth to be realistic and catching the limitation as well. <laughs> dude, <laughs> yeah, you always have these whiny little stories, like these whiny stories that have no consequence. Meanwhile, I'm like facing life for this shit. Ah, you know, what the hell, bro? Oh, Don, you ever have, Don, you ever have a girl that wanted my to daughter like- a bathing suit and take her to Six Flags? <laughs> Shut up. No, it's not that. Oh, yeah. it's not, it's Man not up, that. bro. It's Man that. up, bro. No, Look it's that. Let, let no. me into untried masculinity <laughs> pour it off on you. Go on mustache or something. <laughs> Jesus Christ, kid. You're, you're bumming me out, Adam. Oh, man. That's, that's hey, not look what at I my think. student game to me. Oh, that's oh, it's really cool. Where'd you get that? Like a, three, a 3D printed, like, uh, mayhem uh, bag. You know what I'm saying? This is like the Sorry, mayhem dude. shopping network. Did, did, so, Don, did you ever have a girl, yeah, Don? That, Don, yeah, yeah. Don, you ever have a girl that was, like, too too rough in bed, like, wanted to do bondage or tie you up or anything? No, I don't, never had one of them. It was too rough. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you, you must have had girls that wanted you to punch them in, in bed. Right, Don? You must have girls like hit me when you were in bed. Uh, no, no, I never had any ask me to hit them either. Yeah, oh. but oh. I guess they, they fucking knew. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't gauge it better, you know? <laughs> Dude, did you ever hear uh, uh, no, no, no. By the way, Tank Abbott goes on the Rampage podcast and talks about Ken Shamrock. I guess Ken Shamrock said he squatted 600 pounds. And then uh, Tank Abbott's like, the only time he was ever under 600 pounds was at a Russian whorehouse and some fat chicks sat on his face. <laughs> <It was like, laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, so I remember, I remember seeing Tank. Tank, he benched. 500 or 600 one time. Yeah, you know? I heard that. Wow. Yeah, in the, the early days. Yeah, in the early days, yeah, they, they showed him benching that much. What do you think, Um, yeah. Tank, you know, what do you think Tank's problem was as far as, like, because he was so good for a second, you think it was just he didn't uh, train jujitsu or, or undisciplined or what? Yeah, no conditioning. He didn't have any conditioning. That's why he's such a badass. You know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All he had to do is fucking condition, you know, to, to be able to go past, you know, a minute and a half, but he wouldn't do it. You think it was uh, running at the gym? He wouldn't do the road work? Yeah, yeah he wouldn't do any road work. Man. You look at him, yeah. that's all that. I know. 
I know, like looking at Don Fry and his physique and his conditioning level back in the day, uh, compared to Tank Abbott, it's like, oh, oh my, <laughs> it's like apples and turds. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, what the <laughs> hell, bro? Uh, Tank Abbott looked like a slub. And Don Fry comes busting out like a freaking bodybuilder, his freaking yeah. speedo, looking like a Greek Adonis with a mustache, double mustache. But you can't even compare the two, man. This is ridiculous. Yeah. But, you know, Tank, I'll give the hats off. You did throw some haymakers and big, yeah. big time and, and really brought the sport up in a big way. But I feel like, like you know, you were like the sort of evolution of that, like a dude who could stock and uh, had the conditioning to go the whole rounds, you know? You were, like, ahead of your time back then. People don't yeah. realize that. Also, Tank, oh, Tank was a good wrestler, about... though. He was a pretty good wrestler, though. Tank actually had, like, some... A good wrestler. wrestler. Yeah, but he's, like, one of those guys who, like, stock... He, like, put all his skill points into, like, one-punch power and no, like, conditioning. Like, he's like, oh, I already know how to wrestle, so I don't need to jog right. or I don't need to do, like, what the fuck? So the minute that he got on the floor, he like ran out of gas and would get choked out or whatever. Like Jason, I don't know. That, you know, Jason there were times that, like I, Jason, there were times that I, I saw you, you had like a 10 pack. And so you were you doing like yeah. mile runs? Like were you doing like your cardio? Not 10 mile, no, no. Yeah, I'd be like three. Like I was doing like shorter runs, but I would it, it I, I like got in, I was in the era of a uh, high intensity interval training where we would do like uh I would jog for to weight cutting purposes, but I would also like do like high intensity sprint type training where I would go to the track and do like a sprint and then like hip pads and then like go and do another sprint and hip pads and like uh or for instance like Randy Couture showed me back in the day like a treadmill workout where you do like a full on sprint as hard as you can for thirty seconds. And then like uh, a good run for 30 seconds and then another another sprint for 30 seconds that way. And you would do that in five minute rounds so that you would be acclimated to getting your heart rate bouncing up and down like that. Very similar to a, a fight round, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that long distance running. I think that's different. That's maybe for a different type. That's like a boxing kind of thing, you know, where you yeah. uh, are doing 12 rounds and you like do the. Floyd Mayweather run where you're like jogging on your toes, you know, so that you get a good calf pump for mixed martial arts. There's like a more wide variety of techniques and uh, running is like, you know, important to develop your calves and to be able to move uh, pretty good and have good conditioning and get that weight off of you. But it's not very like conducive to exactly what we do. You need to spend more of that energy on wrestling more of that energy on kickboxing, you know? If you're, if you're jogging all day, then you're going to jog in the fight. You want to be more conditioned with a, a sports-specific condition. You know, I have my guys do, uh, like, conditioning circuits that are very similar to how they're going to fight. I don't mess around, like, you know, um, uh, depending upon who they're fighting or what kind of conditioning they're doing. Uh, I have them do sports-specific to their specific fights. And the newer guys, I just have them get a feel for all the exercises or or make sure that, especially, like, I got a heavy a heavyweight guy who's trying to go to 205. And I'm like, look, bud, drink a cup of coffee and go for a jog before breakfast. Like, stop. Like, stop shoving. Fight. Yeah, you're the biggest. Because he keeps asking me, oh, what kind of exercise do I do? I was like, hey, how about this? How about a fork put down? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome Don did you ever go into a fight knowing you had no conditioning do you want that? did you ever go into a fight knowing that you had no cardio oh hell yeah yeah during the later years yeah you know um, I did that all the time throughout my college wrestling career and uh, then in my last, last, last few fights of my career fighting career yeah I just just taking the fights for the money, yeah. What about and then Jason? That happened to you in Italy, right? Yeah, hell for yeah, bro. Just give me my money. I don't give a fuck. Like I'll win in the first round. Or I'm going home. Give me my money, right. you guys. Hey, I fuck you. Uh... Um, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine going into a fight knowing I had no gas tank. 
Holy Let me ask you a question yeah. about Tank Abbott. Do you think that he stayed fat and out of shape to give himself an excuse about when he would lose? Like, eh, unfortunately, I was like, yeah, I wasn't, my cardio was off. Because I always felt like he would talk about, he would act like he didn't care. He goes, yeah, my cardio wasn't very good. It was almost like he gave himself a permanent excuse. Well, yeah, why he because he's, he's still bitching about shit from 30 years ago, you know? So tell me you yeah. don't care. Why are you bitching yeah, exactly. about shit if you don't care? Yeah. You know, he was trained. He was trained. They they talked about it um, in the Ultimate Ultimate too. They had Jesse Reed training. You know, so he's mentioned five six hundred pounds. They've got Jesse Reed doing his hands work. You know, they they trained that guy because they wanted him to be the face of the UFC. Oh wow! You know? They gave they gave him Cal Worsham in the first round because Cal almost died in the from the, in the May fight. When we fought in Detroit back in May, he had a punctured punctured lung, broke a rib, punctured lung. Yeah, and you tell me six months later he's gonna be ready to fucking fight? No fucking way. You know, so they gave they gave him the tank first round, and then they padded tank, you know, to to fight um, Glass Jaw Joe in the second round. You know, and then third round he fought me, and he he fucking couldn't do it against a real fighter. Now, uh, Don, I just watched a documentary on the Steiner brothers. You ever work with those guys? Yeah, they're great. They're fucking great. Yeah. They are great. They're funny and shit. When did you work with them? Um, you know, I don't think I worked with them. Um, I was on a, I was on a couple of tours with them, but I don't think I worked with them in a in a, in a match. So they were know? the guys, Bill. These guys were like legitimate D one All American wrestlers that went into the WWE. And they would just toss guys on their fucking heads. Like, <laughs> and they would just beat the shit out of these guys in the ring. And they were locker room bullies too. But yeah, always, Scott. Yeah. I wrestled, I wrestled Scott um, in the uh, Las Vegas tournament. And uh, that, the year I was one, 167 or 90. And so I got him um, in the Las Vegas Invitational and uh, tournament. And he was 190, and I had just wrestled 67 two nights before. So, uh, you know, I wasn't. And this guy came had a force 10 knee pad on his arm. That's how fucking, you know, jeez. Like, <laughs> he, hooked, he hooked me in the underhook and just tossed me across the fucking mat. Man, boom. Dude, M Mayhem tried out for the Olympic oh. wrestling team, but never wrestled yeah. in college or high school, and then didn't remember no. if he wrestled Ben Askren or not. Remember that? You're like, no. Yeah. How do you get a tryout if you never even wrestled in college? Uh, well, because I like, did the qualifier and won the qualifier without fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, I got the qualifier, I did the qualifier, and they were like, all right, well, you're in. And I was like, oh, awesome. And, uh, yeah, but then like when I got to like the big leagues, I got smashed, bro. No, I, I, I think I, I won one match, or did I lose by one point? I can't remember. But the guy missed the weight. He missed the weight, so he was like way lighter than me. And I just double legged this guy. And yeah, no, I lost because I kept double legging him. I would take him down, he would escape, and I would ask the referee, I said, Hey, he gets points for that. And then he was like tackling me again. And then so I tackled him again. I double legged that guy like eight times. So do the math. So what? That's 16 points, right? He kept escaping and he kept getting uh, escape points and, and uh, he kept escaping. Exposing my back to the yeah, mat, and I kept was, going. He gets was, points for that. He gets points for that. What the hell? This is bullshit. I kept trying to do jujitsu against them, and yeah, I got lost by one point. I just like how that you, you had no wrestling in college, and you tried out for the Olympics. Yeah. That's amazing. I know. Well, you know, I didn't make it, so it doesn't matter. I mean, that, <laughs> which, which regional did you win? Uh, some in Las Vegas. Yeah, I, I won the I won the same thing back in '88. I won the Las Vegas Regional in Greco and freestyle, and um, then I went well, to the Greco. The other thing, Don, that's the other thing is that I, uh, I it was it was open, so I could oh, I could enter the Greco one, but my coaches were like, "No, no, no, you're gonna get slammed on your fucking head." Yeah. I was trying to <laughs> sign up for the Greco one, but I had no Greco experience at that time. I was like oh. twenty. One years old, you know. 
I was just fighting, you know. But what happened? You were you were doing the Greco one out there? Uh, yeah, I won them both, Greco and Freestyle. And then I went to the Nationals, Greco Nationals, and I got got slaughtered, got put out. First, yeah, Don, Don first told, me, just told me that, that, man, that was Don's house. He goes, I won this trophy. He goes, I won it at 4.30 in the morning. We were there for four <laughs> days. We, we wrestled for four days. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is crazy to, to step up once you get to, like, national level. You know, you can bum around and, and fuck guys up at a local level. I mean, when you get to a yeah. national level where all the best guys are, oh, it's like animals. another level of – like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're so much smarter. Like, the guys understand the game so much more. There's so much subtlety to the sport where guys can just, you know – they play their game so good, yeah. you know. It, yeah. it, it's really, it's really humbling. Yeah, I really appreciate wrestling <laughs> on, on a new level. You know, it's it's oh. something else. You know, MMA wrestling is kind of funky because you you set up a lot of your takedowns from a different distance, and like a lot of things that work and um, uh, that don't work, I should say, in in freestyle or Greco, will work in mixed martial arts because of the threat of the strikes. So you have to worry right. about not getting kneed in the belly or the face. Right. So you right. have to adjust your adjust your setups accordingly. And I noticed that when even now when I go to because I've been doing, you know, mixed martial arts with the guys that fight science, I I'll do some kickbox wrestling, you know. And uh it when I go over to New Ground Jiu Jitsu and try to just do jiu jitsu, I get very few takedowns. Because I'm not used to doing like a single leg, like you know, uh, from setup from a, a collar oh, no, tie. It's always funny. Like, not, even I, like when I coach, like I'll coach a judo kid, and he like grabs the the back of the uh, of yeah. the he, he thinks he's going. I'm like, no, you can't grab the gi. Like, but they're just so used to it, you know. Uh, that, yeah. that, happens, that happens all the time. Uh, well, what do you got coming yeah. up, John? What do you got coming up? Oh, I got a bunch of shit coming up. I got um. At the last part of July here, the 18th to the 21st, I go to Waterloo, Iowa. They're going to put me, induct me in the Wrestling Hall of Fame over there. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, then, let's see. I got, what else I got? I uh, got my urology uh, exam on the 8th of August. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, August 14th, 16th, I'll be in Vegas again um, for the World Jiu-Jitsu Competition. Going to watch my buddy, Colby Gonzalez. He's a 14-year-old nice. 14, 14 kid, and he's like a seven-time world champion already, man. He wow. beats he beats adults. Yeah, he beats some of the adults, man. Um, then let's see, August 19th, I got a court date. Um, we don't want to get in that. <laughs> Was that for punching the guy at the UFC fight? No, no. Oh. No statement situation. It was client would punch. not make any statements. As your lawyer, right. I advise you not to make any statements. <laughs> right. right. You know, uh, on 24th of August, my daughter Katie is competing in a national uh, pole pole dancing competition. You know, she, what? she's a yeah. She's a she graduated oh, yeah. Johns Hopkins Johns Hopkins University with a psychology degree, and then she got a master's from NYU. And then now she's a pole dancer. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I should be happy about that. I'm definitely not going to make any comment about that. Uh, but I hope. Yeah, she's not a stripper. Wait, she's not a stripper. She's a pole. Yes, dancer. they're very different. Yes. She's an yes. artist. Yes, we're not yes. making any yes. comments about that. Just, uh, I hope she gives it her best and does well, whatever she does. Uh, yeah, she's, she's, like, she's, she's a psycho. Dude, that's like Mark Coleman's Dude. daughters. Mark Coleman's daughters are like beautiful, but every he'll post a picture of him and his daughters, and everyone's like, seems like nice kids. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Like nobody, nobody makes any comments. Like she really loves her dad. They really love their dads. Like, like, like yeah, every. I don't comments. I know. I like that. I like that. Yeah, they're they're pretty, pretty too. Yeah, it's nice. They're very pretty girls. They're very pretty girls. They love their dad, man. It's really oh. great. By the they way, really Coleman's, back in, Coleman's back in the hospital right now, so I hope he's okay. What's wrong? Yeah. What's wrong? Uh, he, has, he, has, go fund me again? he has surgery. He has surgery again. Uh, let me see. He What's um, wrong? let me see what we got. Uh, Mark Coleman 
septic infection. A few months. Oh after. God! Yeah. yeah. That's oh, serious. God. So yeah, go I ahead. had that shit. I had that shit three times, man. That's that's a pain in the ass yeah. to get over, man. Fuck. So the wow. fuck from what? From a from from having some. I mean, I hate to bring the podcast down any lower than we can, but like, yeah. you know, what, what, what he has a septic, infection, he has septic in, infection in, in his, in his hip. Uh, he said, ah, uh, shit. yeah, he, he's at the, he's at the Mayo clinic, uh, without draining of the hip, quick draining of the hip, trauma surgery, the condition can be worse and become life threatening. He wrote back in the hospital. My hip is septically infected. They were going to do emergency surgery today, but I'm on blood thinners. Yeah. They're going to have to wait till Monday. I'm gonna hang out Good there. God. I hope, but yeah. So that's yeah. Oh jeez. Damn, bud. Well, get well soon there. Yeah, blessing. Man, that's God a damn blessing. Shame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason, what do you got coming up? Oh, All right. shit. I don't know. I'm just gonna be fucking bummed out right now because you bummed me the fuck out. Nah, I'm yeah, gonna no roll a podcast. Uh, uh, reading the news. Nice. Like um, doing. Uh, I know. Yeah, it's a good gig. It's really awesome. Like uh, I, I love the Ace Man. That guy is funny as shit. And uh, so it's a big honor to be over there. And, um, you know, and I got to thank you guys for helping me uh, get back to, like, my podcast ways, you know. I got to really appreciate. Thanks, Adam. And thanks, Don. Thanks, Bill. Because, like, you guys got me back in this flow of being able to uh, speak English words together. <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, no problem. Well, what do you got coming up, Bill? You? Well, I'm going to go to an L.A. Sparks game. If, if you and uh, Mayhem, everything, I'm cool yeah. enough to go with you. Yeah. I'm going, dog. We're going. Well, you need $11. Yeah, I got baby. $11 and a version to lesbians. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else, though? No, just, uh, just you know, my, my standing show at the Laugh Factory every Wednesday, and then I'm... Wednesday, baby. We've got to go. Hey, uh, we're, oh, we got a TV show? Coming up. Oh, do I have a TV show? show? No, but, but thanks for fucking rubbing that in. Oh. I've been unemployed for oh. five months now. Oh God! What are you on uh, strike like Ayatsi was? <laughs> Dude, he's on a thousand shows. Don't feel bad for him. He's always working. This guy. Uh, uh, no, yeah, I've seen his face on every goddamn channel. What's wrong with this guy? Dude, he's, he's on shows. One day, but, I, I saw him on the Wu Tang show. I'm watching the Wu Tang Chronicles, <laughs> and, and I see him. Why was I, he the token white guy? And I go, yes, Bill. Basically, I was a cop. What do you think I'm going to be in the Wu Tang Chronicles? I go, Bill. <laughs> I go, Bill, you were on the Wu Tang show. He goes, I was? I'm like, yeah, you had lines and shit. Like, like, oh, when was that on? I'm like, okay, fuck you. Uh, so, uh, hopefully, I'll be at the Republican convention on Monday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yo, hey, that's take huge. me with you. I'm a security, bro. I'm a security guard, dog. Let me do oh. it. But, oh, yeah. Uh, they, I don't, they ain't letting you I, nowhere near the president, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Why? We're both felons. What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, you guys are... tips on how to I can give tips on how to shake your probation officer. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta call her back. You guys are the best. Love you guys. Take care. Bye. God 